Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for this day, Father. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to come to your house and to hear your word, Father. Lord, I ask that you bless this service, Father, all the way through, Lord. Bless your people, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. 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 I was looking at the clock down here to make sure I got mine set. That one I'm set short. But uh, if you were here Wednesday night, we, the Lord gave us a message, and it was very, very simple, simple message, but very impactful. And it was that Jesus loves you. Very simple. But it means so much. We talked about how as, as young children we sing that song, Jesus loves us, yes I know, for the Bible tells us so. And sometimes we have to be reminded as adults, even in life, here and there, that Jesus loves us. And he, he sent his... Jesus came and, and died on the cross for me and you that Amen. we might have life and have it more abundantly. In doing that, he demonstrates his love for mankind. Because yet, while we were in sin, we despised and rejected him. He was whipped and bruised and all these things. Even through all that, he laid down his life so that we have life. Amen. And he demonstrates his love by doing these things without thinking twice about it. So he gave us this message, and I believe this, this message this morning, the title is Love Each Other in Christ. Amen. It coincides. You see, Jesus loves us, but we too must love each other. Amen, that's right. He demonstrated his love by laying down his life and we're supposed to be, he's supposed to be our example, and we're supposed to live a life like Christ. So my text scriptures in John 15 and 12, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Amen, that's right. These words right here are very, very intense and, and very deep. Because the love of Christ is something that we can't fathom or even understand. But he says to love one another as he has loved us. And there's a lot that goes into it this morning. But I want to start off in Matthew 22, verses 35 through 40. If you would turn there. <clears throat> Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question. Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. But he doesn't stop there. He goes to say, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two hang, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. You see, he wants us to love him with all our mind, all our mind, our soul, every, our whole being. But if we love him, he also wants us to love one another. He wants us to love people as we love ourselves. In other words, treat people the way you want to be treated. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. And he makes sure to say those two things together. Love God and love people. Because they coincide together. It was very significant. The lawyer was asking these questions. Who is my neighbor? And he instructs them. The Good Samaritan, the parable. 
which we won't be reading today, but the parable, you can read it. You've heard it. We must love one another in Christ. And it says that these commandments, on all these commandments, hang all the laws and the prophets. Amen. God's greatest desire for any, for every human being, is that he loves him with all his heart and love people. It's simple. A simple message. Matthew 7, 12. Jesus says, Therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. You know, as a young child growing up in this church, we had the Royal Rangers. And this scripture right here was instilled in every child that came through these doors. The golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Very, very important. You see, the Lord is looking for a unified body in Christ. Everybody here is significant and has a role. We read in 1 Corinthians 12, 4-31. Now there are diversity of gifts, but the same Spirit... And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are different diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. The same Spirit, the same Lord, and the same God. Amen. He works with each and every one of us. Yes, He does. As long as we're a child, His child, He works in us. And there's different administrations. Another one, in other words, not everybody is the same. But that's what makes us unique and different. Amen. That's where we complement each other. And he wants us to work together. It says, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given the Spirit of the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, interpretation of tongues. But all these work is that one and the same self Spirit dividing to every man severally as he will. All these gifts are just distributed to different people. But it's the same Spirit. You see, we serve one God. Amen. The Almighty God who loves us. That's right. That sent His Son to die on the cross for us so that we might have the opportunity to live. And He gives us these gifts from His Spirit to work through the body. For as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of that, bo that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. <clears throat> For by one Spirit we are all baptized in one body, whether be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am, I am not of the body, is that therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the, if the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now have God set the members, any one of them, in the body, as it has pleased Him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now there are many members, yet one body. In other words, the gifts of the Spirit are administered to every single person. We all come from unique backgrounds, different ways of thinking, Amen. and God uses us with our testimonies and life experiences. Amen. We must be unified in Him because we all 
have something to bring to the table in Christ. And the goal is to let your light so shine before men that he may see the good work of your Father and glorify him. And he ministers these gifts accordingly. You must know that you are important. You see, the Lord doesn't do anything by mistake. The Bible said you were predestinated, you were chosen, you were called to be separated, to be holy, to be renewed. You weren't born by chance. God created you and has given you the abilities that you have so that you can use them for His glorification. Amen. Amen? Mm -hmm. Never let the enemy lie to you and tell you that you're nothing. That's right. That's right. Some might say, well, I just, I just show up to church. Well, guess what? These, these, these seats need to be filled. Amen? Amen. Well, all I can do is pick up the phone. Well, guess what? There's many people waiting to receive a That's phone right. call of love from you. That's right. Amen? Yes. You are the body, and we are all the body together in Christ. One body. The text messages, the phone calls, the prayers, the visitations, all these things unify the body. They edify the body of Christ. Your role, whatever gifts you have, are significant and important. They're vital in the church body. Amen. Verse 21, it says, And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which we think are less honorable upon these we bestow more abundant honor and more, our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have, have no need, but God has tempered the body together have been giving more abundant honor to the parts which lack, that there should be no schism in the body, but the members should have the same care one for another. You see, Jesus was the perfect sacrifice. Amen. The perfect lamb. We too as the body, there should be no schism. We should lift one another up and come together. That's right. No schism. A perfected body in Christ. Can you imagine a world that would lift each other up in love, in care? You've heard songs about world peace and people want world peace and world peace and world peace. That will never happen unless the church body comes together as a whole yeah. Amen. and begins to, to uti utilize the love and the gift that God has given them That's right. first for themselves. That's right. You see, when you lift up the Lord in these ways, He's magnified for all to see. Amen. That's where that light comes in. It shines so bright that you can't hide it and all men will be drawn to the Lord so that He can be magnified Amen? And whether one body suffer, all the members suffer with it, or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. You know, I hear Pastor Tommy saying, we miss Sister Deborah. You know, she, she has an important role here at the church. And when he says that, he's, he's recognizing her importance. Amen. But it don't end with Sister Deborah. Every time somebody misses a service, you're missed. Yes. Amen. We see these things. We talk about it. Thank you. <laughs> you're important to the body of Christ. In verse 27, it says, Now you are the body of Christ and members in particular. 
And God has sent some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. All these things make up the body of Christ. But it goes to say, so that you can remember, you might say, well, I'm not a preacher. I'm not a teacher. I'm not even an evangelist. In verse 29, it says, are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healing? Do we all speak in tongues? Do we all interpret? But covet earnestly the best gifts, yet I show you a more excellent way. Many members in this church have different roles, and those roles are important and vital. There should be no schism in the body, but the members should care one for another. And one, one suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. You see, when Christ went to the cross, he didn't die just for some of the people. He died and laid down his life for all the people. Amen. He said, if they believe, they shall be saved. Whosoever believes shall be saved. You see, when he, when he died and went to the cross and resurrected, he did it for everybody. You see, he was looking for everybody to make heaven their home. And he tells us the greatest commandment is to love him and love your neighbor as yourself. You see, we have an important role even within ourselves and our families. The love of Christ must be demonstrated through our lives. And the gifts must be used for the edification of the church body. You see, we must stand together in this fight of life. The enemies ought to kill, to steal, and destroy. But guess what? We can stand together in Christ to fight this battle. Amen. We've been talking about the spiritual warfare. Over and over again, it's come up. This spiritual warfare, we can come against it in numbers as a church body. You see, even Jesus sent them out two by two. One to care for another. He wants us to care for each other. And yeah. Exodus 17, 11 through 14, we can read... And it said, it came to pass when Moses held up his hands that Israel prevailed, and when he let down his hands, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat thereon, and Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the, one, the other on the other side, and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomfited Amalek, and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, write this, write this for memorial in a book, and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua, and it would utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. You see, this too is also significant. Moses would lift up his hands, and he would win the battle. But as, as humans... You get tired and weary, and his hands begin to drop. And when his hands begin to drop, he begins to lose the battle, and the enemy will overcome. That's right. We can look at this in our own lives yes. and say, some days we're on top of the mountain, and there's other days that we're not. That's right. But when we come down to that place, we begin to lose the spiritual battle. Yes. But it goes to say that here... You see, here and Aaron stayed up his hands, but they sat him on the rock. Who is our rock? Anybody? Jesus, Jesus is our rock. Amen. Amen. 
The wise man built his foundation upon the rock. The storms come, the wind blows, but they could not take it down because he built upon the rock. Right. So they set him down on the rock. Sometimes we got to be reminded who our God is. So they set him down. This is where the edification of the church comes in to lift one another up. Don't forget the God you serve. That's right. Amen. 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 And it says not only did they remind them, sit them down for rest, but they held his hands up. Amen. They stood in battle with him against the enemy. They didn't say, well, good luck. No, my friend. They stayed in battle. They lifted his hands. They encouraged him. They prayed with him. They stood toe to toe against the devil. That's right. In faith, in Christ. Amen. But first, they set him on that rock. Because it is only through Christ Jesus alone that we can overcome any battle. But we must. Amen. Amen. But we must lift each other up and stand and prevail against the enemy. In Matthew 18, 18 to 20, it says, Verily I say unto you that whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Amen. Again I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on, on earth as touching anything that they shall ask and it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst. When two or three gather together, in yeah. agree in faith Amen. and lift up the name of Jesus That's right. things happen yes, they do. Yeah. the spirit of the Lord begins to move I thank God for everyone that comes to the church every single person even those that can't come and that listen in to the sermons Amen. that pray with us yeah. that stand in in proxy when somebody else can't you see, when we agree together, God moves. It takes me and you as vessels of the Lord to be filled with the Spirit to stand in together to overcome this battle of life. And this is standing in love with one another in Christ Jesus. In Acts 2, 1 through 4, it says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a, a sound of, of heaven of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house while they were sitting, where they were sitting. Uh -huh. And there appeared unto them clothed in tongues like as fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Coming together in Christ, one mind, one accord, in the love that they have for Christ Jesus and for one another, the Spirit of the Lord begins to move. It comes in like a mighty rushing wind. How many times have you felt that Spirit right here in this church? The sweet Spirit comes and falls. And the tongues come forth and the message is interpreted. Yeah. And the praise is, is, is amazing. Yeah. This right here is significant for me and you to understand that when we come together, things happen. That's right, amen. God moves. Yeah. It says that He inhabits our praises where two or three are gathered in his name, he's in the midst. Yes, he is. And he honors that. That's right. Amen. Amen. In Hebrews 10, 23 to 25, it says, Let us hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering. Have faith in God, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and unto good works, not forsaking 
the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. There are many today that believe that coming to church is not important. They say, well, I, I serve God in my own way. My friend, the word says not to forsake the assembly of yourself Amen. together even more now so that the end is near. Amen. Amen. I'm not telling you what church to go to. I'm not advocating a single church. What I'm advocating is what the word says is to assemble yourself together. You find a place that serves the Lord in sincerity and in truth, and that the Spirit of the Lord feeds you and moves. And you root yourself down there because we must come together in united Christ. The body is many members. The hand, the foot, the head, they all work together. That's right, amen. What if you showed up with one leg? What's, what about the rest of the body? Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Everyone here has a significant role. Yes, the Bible says iron sharpens iron. Mm -hmm. How can you sharpen the iron if you're in the tool shed and the, the tool's all here? That's right. Thank you, Lord. That's right. We must come together and unite in Christ yeah. if we're expecting God to move in our lives. And the more we come together, the more God moves. He says that my people would turn from their wicked ways and look to him that he bless this nation, our land. Amen. But it takes coming together in the love and unity of Christ. That's right, amen. And it starts right here. Thank you, Lord. Boy. In Luke 6, 27 to 38. There's a little spin that put on. It says, but I say unto you which here to love your enemies and do good to them which hate you. That's right. <coughs> Sometimes it's hard love, enough to love your own family in a sense. <laughs> now it's telling you that you have to love your enemies too. Mm -hmm. Amen. You see, Amen. God died, Jesus died for everybody. We have to love our enemies also. Amen. Bless them that curse you and pray for them which despitefully use you and say unto them that smite smite thee on the cheek offer, offer also the other and him that taketh away thy cloak forbid them not to take thy cloak also. Give to every man that asketh thee and of him that taketh away the goods ask them not again. And as ye would that men should do unto you, do you also unto them likewise. Amen. For you love them which love you, what thank have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. And if you do good unto them which do good to you, what thank have ye? For sinners also do even the same. And if you lend to them whom you hope to receive, what thank have ye? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies and do good and lend, hoping for nothing again. For your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Give, and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet, with all it shall be measured to you again. The Lord expects us to love each other. Now, I'm not saying to cast your pearls before the swine. I'm not saying that. I'm saying love your enemies. That's right. You see, there was a time, or may have been a time, where you may have been walking in sin. That's right. 
There was a time that you may have been going the other direction. And thank God that the Lord pulled you out of that mess. Amen. Thank you, Lord. His grace and His mercy yes. saved you in the condition that you were. That's right. I love hearing Brother Johnny's, Pastor Johnny's testimony about Lyndon and Roland. In the condition that he was, someone led by the Spirit took the time to tell him about Jesus. That's right. Amen. Amen. Never in a million years, Pastor Johnny, you think that you'd be preaching. That's right. You said it. I say the same thing. But we must love one another, love our enemies, preach the gospel. To everybody. Everyone. In 1 John 4, 7-12 it says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And to everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth knoweth not God, for God is love. And this was manifested, the love of God towards us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Here in his love. Not that we love God. But that he loved us. And sent his son to be. The appropriation. For our sins. Beloved if God so loved us. We ought also to love. One another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another. God dwelleth in us. And his love is perfected. In us. The Bible says to have the mind of Christ. It says that he takes out the, the rock, the stony heart, and puts a heart of flesh. It tells us to let our light so shine before men that they see the good works of your Father. If we represent in Christ, God is love. He loved us and sent His Son to die and be resurrected that we might have life. How much more should we love one another? That's right. Edify each other. Uh -huh. Lift each other up. Encourage one another. That's what the gospel is all about. Thank you, Lord. Amen. In Romans 12, 4 through 12, it says, For as we have many members... In one body, and all members have not the same office. So we being many are in one body in Christ, and every one members of one another. Having then gifts different, different according to the grace that is given to us. Whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proposition of faith. Or ministry, let us wait on our ministry, or he that teacheth on teaching. Or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor which is evil, cleave to which is good. Be kindly affection to one another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. Not lawful in business, favorite in the spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. These right here are expectations of how we should live our life. Loving one another. Utilizing the gift that God has given us. Do it with diligence. Ruling over people, do it diligently. Be nice, be courteous. Use what God has given you. Not showing favoritism. Love without dissimulation. Abhor which is evil and cleave to which is good. Be kind and affection one to another. And it says, Fevered in the spirit, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing infinite prayer. 
And it finishes with continuing instant in prayer. That's right. Because it's it's not always easy. That's right, amen. But if you're in the spirit and communication with the Lord, yes. the Lord works in you and through you. In 1 Peter 4, 8 through 10, it says, And above all things, have fervent charity amongst yourself, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one another without grudging. And as every man has received a gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. In Galatians 6, 9 through 10, it says, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap and we faint not. Amen. As we therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are the household of faith. Matthew 10, 8, it says, Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils. Amen. Freely you have received, freely give. Amen. The Lord has bestowed His grace upon you. But it's not just for you. It's so that you can pass it on to others. That's right, amen. It says, especially the household of faith. We have to lift each other up in God. Be not weary in well-doing. Freely you have received. Freely give. In Proverbs 18, 21, it says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Would you rather eat the fruit of death or the fruit of life? You see, you can use your tongue to knock down people or you can use it to spread the gospel Amen. and to lift each other up. And the reward is the fruit thereof. That's right. Amen. Amen. In James 5, 14 through 16, it says, Is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall have the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Here again we see the unity of the church body. The people in positions, the out of the church, when somebody can come to them and say, hey, I need prayer. See, it takes men and women to stand in those positions. That's right. To do the work that the Lord has called them to do. Now, I'm not saying that they're the ones that heal you. No, sir. What I'm saying is the Lord has put them in a role. And he uses men and women to fulfill his purpose. Amen. He said, call for the elders of the church. Let them anoint you with oil and pray for you. That's, right, That's our responsibility that he gives us. In Matthew 18 and 20, it says, For where two or three are gathered in my name, I'm in the midst. Once again, in John 15, 9 through 7, it says, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Amen. Continue ye in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. These things I have spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. That's the text scripture. That's the theme today. Love one another as He has loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You see, we can't measure up to his love, but we can take his example for his creation, and that is one another, to love each other as he has loved us. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servants knoweth not what the Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go forth and bring forth fruit, 
and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you. Now end with this. These things I command you, that you love one another. God bless you this morning. Amen. Hello, I'm Pastor Rocky, and I personally want to thank you for watching my video. If this video has helped you and encouraged you in any way, or if you know somebody that can use this video for encouragement, I'd ask that you like and subscribe. My goal is to spread the gospel all around the world, and you can help me reach that goal. God bless you, and have a blessed day.